Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Except for today, we're not doing a review. We are going to be talking about one of our favorite games in all of its iterations and sequels and expansions and spinoffs. We're doing a ranking! Pandemic style. Yes. <laughs> so, Pandemic has been wildly popular the past little bit here, um, for some obvious reasons. Um, but it's a really fun game. It's this cooperative game where you're working together to cure these diseases. And it's just really challenging, it's really interesting, and it's just so popular that they, they keep on making more and more versions of it, and they are all great. <laughs> yeah, so disclaimer, um, for my listing, there are a few that I haven't played. So I've not played Fall of Rome. Um, Call of Cthulhu, and then we're also putting expansions in here, and I haven't played The Cure or State of Emergency. Yeah, The Cure is the dice game you haven't played yet? Correct, yep. All right, so I have not played Fall of Rome. That's the one I have not played that I know of. Um, so let us know in the comments below if you think that we should try add this to our repertoire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start off my number 11 out of 11. I am put down, um, this is the... Pandemic Contagion. This is kind of turns pandemic on its head. You are the disease. You are trying to infect everyone else, trying to infect the world. Um, I have also not played this one. Yeah. The <laughs> reason I put it at number 11 is it didn't really feel like pandemic to me. It felt like this other strange thing. And also, it felt a little bit... You didn't like being the disease. Yeah, it felt like this... I don't know. It felt sad. <laughs> it felt... <laughs> I don't know how to how to describe it. It just made... I just, I just didn't like that. I, it felt insincere or ah, I don't know I can't put my finger on it but that's what's in my number 11 uh, my number 10 is Pandemic the Cure this is the dice game um, that's you know kind of mirrors a lot of the things that the original game of Pandemic does however it's all in dice form everything's kind of boiled down to this dice version um, I liked it which tells you how strong this list is it's my 10 it's still fun it's just that um, I don't know it was too chancy to I don't know I didn't like it as much as, as everything else on my list. <laughs> All right, so my number nine, then, is Pandemic Call of Cthulhu. Uh, Are you guys seeing a pattern here? <laughs> All oh. the ones that <laughs> oh, like I'm putting at the bottom of my list are the ones that she has <laughs> not played. <laughs> um, it's probably because I would rather be playing them with you, which is why I rank them so low. So what was your number eight again? Are you my, number, my number nine, nine. <laughs> is Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu, it gets a couple interesting things. It had a really interesting theme of Cthulhu and that whole Lovecraftian uh, you know, mythos and universe. Yeah. It had these big, you know, kind of these big diseases, they're the elder gods or whatever, and then the smaller ones as well. And that was kind of cool. Um, I don't know, it just was a little too dark for my personal tastes. Um, but it was fun and it was challenging. And I've heard that if you liked that world, if you like Lovecraft, that you really like this game. Yeah. yeah. All right, so my number eight um, is a game Bethany has played, finally. This is Pandemic Rapid Response. This is the real-time dice game where you're rolling dice furiously, uh, trying to match symbols, fly this plane around the world, give supplies and different things needed to these big cities. Um, I liked it. It was super fun. I just... Uh, it, it didn't have that Pandemic vibe that I'm familiar with, I guess. And that's why I put it where I put it. It was still good, and I would I would recommend it. It was just, uh, it didn't have the vibe I like in the pandemic games. Yeah. So my number seven is Rapid Response. <laughs> <laughs> we're all the same things that Ryan said. It was a fun game. I had a lot of fun playing it. It just didn't feel like a pandemic for me, which is why I have it at seven. So my number seven, then, is Good Old Fashioned Pandemic. This is... Oh, man, it's one of the first games that we played together yeah. as as hobby board gamers as opposed to just gamers, I guess, or like yeah. people who played games. Yeah. Um, and it just opened our eyes to this world of, of co you know, cooperative games. It was so much fun, and it was you know customizable as far as how difficult you wanted it. It felt like this video game almost. Like, you can have different levels of board game difficulty. It's so interesting. And it's just this really interesting theme. I love it. Um, even at number seven, super fun, super solid. All right, so my number six is Pandemic. <laughs> Copycat. Like, copy each other. Yeah, um, for all the same things that Ryan said, this was one of our first games that we that we owned. Maybe one of the first ten games we owned. Maybe one of the first five. I don't know. It's we, hard to say. It's that hard we hobby played, games. That we played as we played games. Yeah. Not like casually, but actually. Yeah. So this was, yeah, it's good. It's solid. It's not going to go anywhere. It's definitely staying with us until we die i guess but yeah I, it's it's a good game 
All right, so my number six is Pandemic Iberia. This is a standalone game um, where it's the whole game is taking place on the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, it's got this historical feel to it, um, and all the diseases are actually you know named diseases, you know malaria, typhoid, all those kinds of things that were actually real calamities for the Iberian Peninsula in the 1800s. Um, I really like it a lot. I like it even more than Base Pandemic. Yeah. Um, my number five is On the Brink. It's one of the expansions, and it brought... What did it bring? <laughs> uh, it brought the Vero Strain. It brought the Teams. teams. And then the Bioterrorist, right? And the Bioterrorist, I believe. Yeah, those are all really fun. Teams is really fun. Um, the Contagions, it's, it's really funny because when we are working on this raking, we play with Contagion all the time. The Virulent Strain. Or the Virulent Strain, yeah, not Contagion. The Virulent Strain all the time that I forgot it was an expansion because we never play without it. That's how good we think it is. <laughs> all right, so my number five is another expansion called State of Emergency. This is one that uh, we own, but somehow... You haven't played yet? Ryan didn't believe me. He took the box out. He was showing me all the stuff. And I was like, yep. Because you showed it to me doesn't mean I've played it. <laughs> I really like what this adds to the game. It adds the super bug uh, module, which is really challenging. It also adds the hinterlands, which is like the rural areas in between these big cities. You know, all the pandemic variants, they all feature these big, huge mega cities all around the world. And, you know, we live in the middle of Iowa. <laughs> There's, you know... Des Moines not even <laughs> in any of the pandemics. So it's nice to see a game featuring the rural areas in between all these big cities and all these different diseases hitting those areas and kind of spreading to the cities. It was kind of kind of interesting challenge. Yeah. My number four Ryan was Ryan's number six, and that is Iberia. Um, if I were to play Pandemic Base or Iberia, I would choose Iberia over the two. I just really, really liked it a lot. I liked what it did. I kind of like... I just really liked it. Yeah, I don't know what, what more I can say besides I would choose that over um, Pandemic without any expansions. So my number four was the In the Lab expansion. Oh my gosh, this is fun. And it is wild. It is Petri dishes and you're trying to actually, you know, more or less solve the disease you know, cure the disease with these in the laboratory as opposed to in the you know, by turning in five cards like you do a normal pandemic. Uh, really difficult, really fun. Oh my gosh, I I just love it. Yeah, uh, it's my number three. <laughs> for, the, for all the same things that Ryan said, I just like how you really have to think about what you want to use the cubes as you cure them because you can run out of them, but you also need to use them and keep on your card and then use them in the lab. And so I just like that that you have to be more conscientious about what you're doing with the cubes. It's really good. <laughs> so Bethany mentioned uh, on the brink is her number five. It's my number three. Oh, gosh. Like I said, we use the variant strain every time and if we ever get the right amount of people we play the bioterrorists you know all the time and i know it's hypocritical that i said that i didn't like contagion for the kind of the darkness to it many. yeah the one yeah. versus many is nice and it's it's kind of that hidden movement thing kind of like in like a, a scotland a yard kind of a game right you're not a disease you're yeah well i don't know i know it's hypocritical to like that but it's really fun and it's really challenging to be that person and kind of hide behind the shadows and get caught i uh, had the scotland yard vibe to it in the pandemic world yeah awesome so our number ones and our number twos synced up perfectly. So our number two was Pandemic, Pandemic Legacy, Legacy Season, season two. 2. And our number one, Pandemic Legacy, Legacy Season, season one. 1. Uh So yeah, let's start with the number one. Yeah. Uh, and go backwards. Pandemic Legacy Season 1 may be one of the greatest adventures we ever went on with the tabletop. Yeah, it might be one of my... It might be my all-time favorite gaming experience. I guess outside of playing with the kids. So it's like my second <laughs> favorite gaming experience. It just did things that I had never experienced in a game. Season 1 really... I mean, Legacy Games had existed before Pandemic Legacy Season 1. But it was only after that that people were talking about them all the time. It was quite incredible. And the thing that happens... And you know what I'm talking about if you've played it. The thing that happens... I remember being upset and just like really sad when I was at work the next day and I couldn't explain to people that this game, this thing happened 
in a game, and that's why I'm so mad right now. Yeah, for a game to elicit that much emotional response proves the quality of the storytelling and the, you know, it kind of really sucks you in and draws you in. Yeah. You're playing with the same group of people over and over again for like, I don't know, 20 games or so. Yeah. You're just, you're, you're really tied to these characters. You really love this storyline. Um, it's incredible. So number two, season two, which is our number two. Yeah. Um, again, it's just, even though it was, we didn't like it as much as number one, it just, was just amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, by not as much, we're talking like 100% to a 96%. It's not yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I mean, opening these boxes and getting this new information kind of unfolding as you go uh, was just incredible. Putting the stickers, loading the board, and discovering new parts of the map. Uh, it was really fun. The story was incredible. The gameplay, I didn't like quite as much as I did in the number one, the season one. Um, but the storytelling was just as good. Yeah. Really strong. You thought that season one catered more towards actual pandemic, where season two is yeah. a slightly different game. Yeah, that's what it felt like to me, at least. Yeah. For me, I thought they were very similar in how I like and how we played and all of that. It was just that, for me, number one was so novel that I can't erase that from my memory of it. Yeah. Um, so if I... Not that you would play these in reverse order, but I wonder if I would have liked season... If that would be... Yeah. Yeah. Depending on how I played them. But both... Super solid. And they have announced season three. And when they do, take our money. Just take it. <laughs> we, <laughs> we will play the heck out of that it's game. It's not going to take our money. You're taking Sam's money because it's your turn. Is you right. You're up, Sam. <laughs> 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 all right. So that is our rankings of all the pandemics that we have played. Again, we didn't put Fall of Rome in there. It could be number one for all we know. Yeah. You let us know. Tell us what you think. It's not beating season one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's not. No, it's not. But, uh, yeah, we really enjoy this game. Um, so be sure to subscribe so you see all of our videos as they come out. You can find us on Facebook as well. We are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. We've got all kinds of cool content coming your way. So stay tuned, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye.